everyone. I'm Elizabeth Liz Miranda, your bilingual realtor with Miranda Properties, and welcome to Casa y Vida Houston. And uh, first thing we want to do is we want to recognize our sponsors for the show. Um, the first one is Susie Condolopoulos. She is with Gateway Mortgage. She is a loan officer. And uh, if you're looking for a loan, you can contact her. And we'll show you her information in just a little bit. And then, of course, we've got Texas Low Cost Insurance Agency. And they specialize in homeowners insurance. Those are our sponsors, and we want to thank them. Uh, and there is their information. Anywhere in Houston, you can feel free to contact them. Uh, and then, of course, I want to welcome my co-host, Sonia Rivera. Hi, how are you? Glad to be here again today, Liz. We have an exciting show today, right? Yes, we do. So we're actually going to have representatives from Mecca, and Mecca Houston. We're also going to have um, the producers of Calavera con Calavera, uh, a play. But first of all, we want to talk about an interview we did to, uh, this week. Sonia, tell us about that. It was so exciting to interview Macario Ramirez with Casa Ramirez uh, in the Heights. Uh, they've been there for, for over 40 years, and, and it's just such a beautiful shop. It was my first time actually going into the shop I've driven by and I've, I've heard about it and seen it on television but it was just such a wonderful experience I didn't want to leave I, he's just got so much history and so many stories to tell I, I wish I could have spent the whole day there I know I agree I agree it was a great interview so uh, we want to go ahead and share that interview with you Mr. Ramirez tell us a little bit about your store I was just mentioning it's such a beautiful store and you have such amazing things in here tell us a little bit about it we love what we do. This is uh, Welcome to Casa Ramirez. And uh, we've been doing it over 40 years now. And uh, started small, obviously, and now we're quite big, large. And I had a chance early on in my life, after I got out of school, to either go work in Washington or California or back to San Antonio and back to Houston. And I decided to San Antonio, Houston. And I started thinking about opening up a, a shop something we call Casa Ramirez. My father taught me a lot of things about what this merchandise. So we opened Casa Ramirez, and it's been nicely successful ever since. We invite a lot of people. A lot of people come here. Uh, what you see all around me is Dia de los Muertos del Den, which has become very popular. We started promoting it uh, 30, 40 years ago. And now it's gotten quite big. A lot of places are doing it, and I'm glad that they are. Uh, Day of the Dead is about remembering your loved ones, remembering uh, your antepasados, your ancestors, and and going both uh, to the cemetery on November 1st and 2nd, November 1 for children, November 2 for adults. We promoted this and taught it and. I've had hundreds of people come through here, and I even have a classroom in the back. I, d I didn't want us to lose this beautiful, this be beautiful celebration. Yeah. So. yeah, it is a beautiful tradition, and thank you. I just learned something I didn't realize. I knew it was November 1st and 2nd, but I didn't realize the first was for children and the second for adults. Um, there's a beautiful altar right behind you, which I understand is your family altar. Yes. Can you tell us a little bit about that one? Oh, that's, that's a very close one. That's a, we, we keep it year-round because a lot of people come here from out of town, out of state, to, to look at what we're doing, especially in Dia de los Muertos. That first one is a community altar. Judy Turner does that where people that don't have an altar, we have about six, eight people invited to put altars uh, here. So we, uh, uh, it's a tribute to, to my father, my mother, my father, Jesus, my mother, Marina, and uh, Chrissy, her parents, George, and Chrissy Dickerson, yeah. And so you see photographs of them in the back. Then you see an arch over the top. Arch signifies someone of importance that you're honoring, you're remembering. There's, a, there's so much symbolism, eight or ten components, and most of them are here. And uh, I, I don't think that I have my mother's molca It had a hole at the bottom. <laughs> oh, no. Uh, we kept it. She had thrown it away in, in, in the trash can. And I said, what is it? He said, es es mugrero. Ya no sirve. 
I said, no, no, I mean, Miss Eater. Yeah. And I've had it all these years, for many, many, many years. And other things, one thing, uh, you have a glass of water on each altar, and then you have salt. I'll tell you about the salt in a bit. And you have these, these flowers. They're called simpasuchil. Simpasuchil is a, a very ancient flower. These are not real. But uh, we can't get the real ones here. You have to get them in Mexico. Right now, a lot of people are working on their altars in Mexico and, and going out to cemetery and out looking for flowers to put around there. You put the person's favorite flowers, but you put the orange flower, the Simpachusuchi, because and it's very fragrant. It represents the sun. The sun is growth, and, and, and uh, it, it's very symbolic. It's yellow, orange, are very symbolic. Um, in, in a very strange way. Each altar usually has a little salt, a little container of salt on it. What does the salt signify? I'm glad you asked me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, to keep away the evil spirits. Oh, okay. Yeah, and then uh, a lot of, sometimes I give classes to chefs in Houston, and they usually ask, uh, well, we do the same. If you break a glass or break a plate, you say, oh, God, what, what, what happened? You get salt, and you throw it behind you. Get the salt, throw it behind you. So that's what well, that salt is for. And it's, we believe that everybody has good spirits, but they have evil spirits. And it's that evil spirit that made you break that glass. Okay. I remember as a little kid, I, I didn't know any better. And my grandmother or mother would say, Correle, correle, ahí viene el diablo. And I didn't know that. I'd go outside and under the house, and I'd hide and, uh, until he was gone. And then they said, you can come up, puedes salir. That's interesting. I recall one time going into a, a shop and there was uh, novedades like the, similar to this and, and one of the little monitos uh, fell over when I walked in and, and the store lady said, I traes un travieso. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I didn't know what she meant by that, so now I know. It's good yeah, to know. There's always an evil spirit, a bad spirit following us that makes make us do what we don't want to do. Interesting. Uh, yeah, and it goes all the way back to the Last Supper, and when Judas was sitting at the table in La Mesa, there was some salt on there. And when Jesus said, which of you betrayed me? Give me the rest, you know. And he leaned over nervously, and he knocked over the salt. Oh, so interesting. And so that, uh, that's where that story comes from. Uh, so these altars are so beautiful. They have such amazing um, their character and just it's an it's an honor to just look at them because you can tell the love that goes into these altars um, how long has this tradition been in existence can you tell us a little bit about its origins it's pre-columbian pre the Aztecs and uh, before the Colombians came from Spain to conquer Mexico looking for gold and uh, they uh, the tradition was already going with the, the los Aztecas and the, the priest that uh, stayed in Mexico to civilize Mexico, supposedly, they, there was a lot of uh, ancient tradition, you know, indigenous tradition. And so it goes back to Aztec. Okay. Yeah, way back. And I, so I understand that all of the, uh, like the arch you indicated and the salt and the water have a, a specific significance. Yes. What is it? Why do people do the altars and what is the, uh, what is the Dia de los Muertos actually mean? Well, it, it coincides. It's both religious and, and indigenous. And uh, the, uh, you know, the, the it, it's done, again, in remembrance of a, of a loved one. And uh, it's, it, the ritual, or all you see here, is a combination of uh, church, you know, all saints, all souls. November 1, November 1, all, all saints, Los Angelitos. And November 2, the adults. 
And that's when we celebrate this, which will be in a, in a week or so. We'll yes. be celebrating uh, Dia de los Muertos with a procession and music and entertainment. And we invite people to come. It costs them nothing. Just come see how we do it. And, and you do that right here along the street in front of the store, or where is that? The store, mostly. Okay. And then outside, at the weather permitting. And then we have a procession of Aztec dancers, Danza Azteca. Mr. Ramirez, give us your, uh, the, the specific address of Casa Ramirez and your phone number and how people can reach you. Yeah, we're at 220 uh, 19th Street, 19th, West 19th Street. We're between Yale and Shepherd. And uh, we're open every day from 10 until 6, sometimes 7 later during when we have a, a, an exhibit like this. Uh, and uh, it's in the Houston Heights. We ask everybody to come, come see us, come, come be with us. Well, as you can see, it was so, um, it was such an amazing interview. It was just such a pleasure to be sitting there with Mr. Ramirez. And he had so much information. I learned so much from him. I really, really didn't want to leave. Um, he does have classes available. And if you look him up on Facebook, all of their information is on there. If you go to Casa Ramirez on his Facebook page, you'll see when the classes are held. They're one-hour classes. But it gives you the history of the de los Muertos. And it, it's just fascinating. So it was such a pleasure to be there with him and um, I guess with that we are going to break for a commercial and we will be back shortly with our next guest and Liz Miranda welcome back to Casa Vida Houston and now we have um, representatives from Mecca first of all I want to introduce you to Alicia Valdez she is the founding director of Mecca welcome Alicia thank you for having us here very welcome. And next we have Teresa Escobedo. She is a curator of the exhibition Retablos 31 or 31, right? Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, so I want to go ahead and start off with Alicia. Alicia, tell me about Mecca. First of all, since you're a founding director, when did a Mecca start? We began in 1977 at mm -hmm. St. Joseph Church as an organization uh, beginning a multicultural festival. We were probably one of the first festival, multicultural festivals at that time. And we were representing the old Sixth Ward and the First Ward, which are historic districts in the city of Houston. And it had almost every ethnic group represented in that had come through Houston. And um, we, uh, from there, we began the after the uh, alternative arts education program, which was a program to help students learn the arts in multidiscipline areas, mm -hmm. but also to use that as a form to help them to stay in school, go on into higher education. Um, and that we incorporated in 1979. So. We've been doing this for 41 years now. Wow, wow. So it's very much into the arts and, and certainly the culture, right? The right. Hispanic culture. Cultural, uh, cultural arts. Yes. Well, I've, I've never had the pleasure of going to Mecca. Mm -hmm. I've heard so much about Mecca. I know there's always so many events going on. And uh, in fact, you have a few going on right now. So right. tell us about the events, the, the events that you have going on right now. Well, this weekend we have the uh, uh, Dia de los Muertos Festival, which we began in. Uh, 2001 and uh, it is on uh, Saturday the 27th and Sunday the 28th from 7 I'm sorry 11 a.m. to 7 p.m. and it uh, provides all kinds of uh, interesting uh, things for people to do first of all lots of food lots of great food uh, performance stages three of them uh, inside the building and outside of the building. We have some 28 uh, artisan vendors that are going to be selling their their work. And uh, then we also have a children's area. Uh, and then inside we have our altar exhibit throughout the building. Uh, various people from the community s set up altars for their families, for their loved ones. Uh, we even have one honoring uh, the, uh, the the children who were killed at uh, Santa Fe oh, at high school. 
and uh, and then the new thing that we're doing is the Retablo 31 exhibit and uh, Teresa Escobeda who's our curator can explain that to you awesome so um, uh, Teresa could you please tell uh, tell us a little bit about the Retablo yeah yeah this year Mecca is very pleased to receive um, an exhibition which is happening has been happening in Houston for 30 years. Originally this exhibition was created and hosted by Lawndale Art Center which was founded also in the 70s but their original location is or was in the East End on Lawndale. Um, so they have carried this tradition of a Dia de los Muertos themed um, retablos exhibition and their program was such that they would hand out tins, have artists from the community pick them up, make these amazing creations, turn them in, and the auction of these pieces of art from community members would become an annual fundraiser. So over the past 30 years it has become one of their most popular, most beloved events. Uh, and I think from Londell's perspective they're trying to refocus their programming on contemporary artists and very respectfully have handed this program over to Mecca to, to carry forth from here on out. So it's the first year that it has been hosted at Mecca, and it will not be the last, um, but we are really trying to encourage artists to participate, to learn more, and to respect the actual tradition and cultural heritage from which retablo making comes. And also, at the time, um, we're hosting this event during Day of the Dead celebration, so there's also a huge component there um, where we're celebrating our own heritage in addition to this community exhibition event. Right. So for those of us that don't know what retablos are, can you explain to us a little bit more about what do we mean by retablos? What are they? Retablos are also known in Mexico as laminas. Um, retablo means literally in translation behind the altar or an altar piece. So they can be small paintings, large paintings, um, oil on tin, oil on copper, oil on wood. Sometimes they're sculptural, but they are devotional tools either created by an artisan or commissioned in order to help us with our own uh, prayerful links or our own intent towards a higher power. Um, they can honor our loved ones, they can make a request, they can be made out of gratitude. So there's a broad spectrum through which retablos can be made, but they are a hugely spiritual component um, that links us to our, our cultural heritage and our greater beliefs. And who makes these? In this case, for Retablos 31, um, they were created by artists from the community. So we distributed t 200 tins, small 8 by 10 tins, and we had, uh, I think, two days of pickups, first come, first serve. If you wanted to participate in this, uh, in this event, you were welcome to stop by and pick up a tin. Given about a month to create a unique work of art and hopefully do some research about where this heritage come from, um, and then we had three days of intake where artists would come in and drop off their creations. We had no idea what to expect. We had no idea what the reception would be like now that this event is at Mecca. Hugely surprised that so many artists are happy about this transition and, and are really excited about seeing their work at Mecca. Yeah, and, and how long have you been involved with this? This is the first year that it has happened. It's a transition year between this uh, tradition annual event at Lawndale Art Center being transferred to Mecca. So I, I believe that I'm the first person to take on <coughs> this transition report like role. Mm -hmm. um, I came on I think at the end of July and, and pedaled to the metal tried to see what, what we could make of this event. Given the very strong appreciation for this annual event from audience members and community members supporting Lawndale. Yeah, well, it sounds like you know, very, very interesting. Now, is this uh, is it an exhibit that's taking place from a certain time to a certain time? Or when can they uh, come and, and look at the these? exhibition? Is up now. Um, you can view it daily, Monday through Friday, at Mecca. I think any time during the day, about from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. It opened with the Altares exhibition um, publicly last week on the 19th with a blessing ceremony and Aztecas blessing. Um, so it's currently on view, 
It will culminate with the Calavera Rendezvous, which is next Friday, November the 2nd, 8 to 11 p.m., um, which is will be a silent auction fundraiser for Mecca. So guests are invited to come and silently bid on the retablos that they like. Uh, and half of those proceeds will go to the artists who created the, the retablo, and half will go to Mecca to support Mecca's operating funds, which certainly go to support many of the initiatives that Alice mentioned. Awesome. Well, Alice, could you also tell us a little bit about the, um, what is it, the, uh, the rendezvous? Is it Calavera Rendezvous? What is it called? Calavera Rendezvous. Yeah, that's part of the, the retablo at, at 8 o'clock. Uh, people, the general public can come and... Uh, bid also on the on the auction item of uh, the uh, retablos and there's going to be music and uh, performance our the mecca ballet folklorico will perform uh, vanessa Cerda and uh, uh, her accompanist mr avalos will be performing uh, so you know and there'll be a dj so be dancing and people enjoying themselves. What's neat is it's actually on the day of All Souls Day, which is November 2nd. And, um, but the, all of these, these, um, altars will be up till the middle of November. So oh, people can nice. still come and. Now is there so a fee, uh, to enter? To, to, to uh, the, uh, for the retablo, the yeah, the mm -hmm. retablo from six to eight is, um, a uh, hundred dollar VIP uh, because it is a fundraiser for Mecca for the arts education program and then the uh, 8 to 11 is forty dollars and uh, we're, our families and uh, parents are making traditional food for the, the, the de that particular holiday mm -hmm. uh, so there's a lot, lot of activity this is just part of a performance series that Mecca has. We have every month we offer some kind of performance or visual art exhibit. So it's a continuation of our 2018-2019 uh, exhibit, uh, a performance series. All right. And what about the, the calaveras? I mean, I'm not the calaveras, the altars. What about as far as coming to see the altars? Is there a, a time and is there a fee for that? We're open for at 10 a.m. And we're actually open till about 8 p.m. We have classes. One class goes till nine. Uh, so, but 8 p.m. is they can come so in. They can come see the altars. Oh, yeah. How many altars do you guys have right now? I think there are about 30 of them. Oh yeah. wow, and that's a lot. On two levels. Wow, that's that, that's fantastic. Yeah, we're in the building, the old Dow School, and it is a 104-year-old um, building. Now, is that the address that I saw that's on Kane? Yes. Mm -hmm. 1900 okay. Kane Street. Okay, awesome. You can't miss it. Okay. It's a wonderful well, building. Well, it sounds like it's a lot, a lot to go see. And like I said, I For myself sure. have not been to Mecca, I have to admit, but I certainly am going to come and look at, at all the exhibits that you have. And, uh, and thank you so much for all that information. Yeah, and thank you. Uh, we want to encourage everyone, of course, to come out to Mecca. They have so many different events. Mm -hmm. And how can they, how can they uh, look up all these events? Where, where is the Certainly website? Certainly Facebook would be a great place to look. Um, Mecca Houston, the, the website, um, Mecca. If you Google Mecca, the website comes right up. The website has all the information about the various events. We're trying to be very active on social media. To We really want to share this heritage with as many people as possible. At a time when Day of the Dead has like skyrocketed I know, in it mainstream sure culture, so we we really want to stay true to our roots and and to share our culture with as many people as possible. So we're we're live, tweeting and feeding and like putting it out there. Well, now you know, guys. You, you can find out, find all the information on Facebook. And again, once again, ladies, thank you so much for all the information. Thank Thanks you for having us. Thank you for having us. And we will us. be right back after this commercial. Hi everyone, welcome back. Today uh, we are also here with Grupo Indigo and they are here to talk about their fifth anniversary performance of Calavera con Calavera. Um, hey guys, how are you? Hello, good, good afternoon. afternoon. Thank, you. Thank, Thank you, you for, for having us here. Great. Um, go ahead and introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about how the show started. Uh, well, my name is Domingo Banda. I'm uh, one of the founders of Grupo Teatro Indigo. We've been working in the community for 11 years now. And <laughs> Calavera con Calavera started uh, five years ago, and when we decided to 
you know, we had been wanting to do something about Day of the Dead, and and it was like September, and I said, this year, it was 2014, that this year we should have it, and then Eddie started with all the research, and we came out with the play Calavera con Calavera, that's how we came Great, started. and Calavera con Calavera is, in English, doesn't translate well, right? Skull or skull? <laughs> uh, yeah, that's something like we were translating Calavera con Calavera. It cannot be skull with skull, but uh, it can be skulls. So. skulls. There you go. There you go. <laughs> yeah. It's unfortunate that a lot of things don't translate, but it's a, um, I hear it's a wonderful show. And uh, so do you both perform in the show? Eddie perform. Eddie's yes. part of the cast. I'm just producing. Well, hello. I'm um, Eddie Gonzalez. I'm also a founder of Group Pool de Teatro Indigo and writer of Calavera con Calavera. And yes, I actually am part of the cast. I play Vinicio. Uh, don't really like to give too much away from him because <laughs> so people could be surprised. But mm -hmm. yes, I am part of the cast. Okay. And so you said you wrote the the show. Yes, I did. Actually, um, I knew very little of Dia de los Muertos. It is something new. I mean, I heard about it. I just didn't really know what it represented. And when I wrote the script, I think I had the first draft. Domingo, I gave it to Domingo. He said, "Like, nope. <laughs> <laughs> this is not it." <laughs> So I had to go back and research to see what Dia de los Muertos was actually on the Mexican tradition. Interesting, so. interesting. So um, it's a, it looks like a very colorful show, and, and oh, I'm yes. definitely going to see it this year. Um, so tell us, how many people, how many cast members do you have? We actually have seven, seven cast members on stage. It's... Um, we have La Muerte por ahí, like Katrina, you know, everybody knows that she looks so pretty. So you'll be surprised with her. And um, we, this year we have a special collaboration with uh, De La Rosa Dance Company. Mm -hmm. uh, I was um, sharing with you earlier, Sonia, that uh, we try to do something different every year for the audience. We have people that has been there this past five, four years. And every time mm -hmm. they get surprised, you know, because like we, we put something, we include something new, either on the visuals, dance, music, and uh, we ha we're having a, a live singer. It's uh, Nancy Lydia. She was with us last year. She's coming back this year. And now uh, Mrs. De La Rosa, which is a, a high school teacher from Aldin School District, she's coming to be part with her students. So Oh, I love great. that. I love that that they're bringing students because um, yes. as we were talking about in the previous interview, um, that it's a tradition that really needs to be passed down generation to generation. And, and I think that uh, we mentioned Coco earlier, and I think that uh, it's done a wonderful job at reopening that, uh, that window so that we can teach our children um, and, and, our, and our neighbors, friends and neighbors, about the culture of, of what Dia de los Muertos means. And, and I know that um, your show, again, has been around for five years. So tell me a little bit, I, I guess I'm a little interested to know what the process was for writing the play, because you said the first time you took it through Domingo, he said no. <laughs> so what does that mean? You didn't have it accurate, or he just, you know, I, I know that artists, is, it's, a, it's a perfection you know, it's, it, you feel it, right? You feel it when it's right. So what, what was the process in the writing and the knowing when you had the right product? Well, I guess the first time, uh, the first draft, I didn't really do my research correctly. Okay. Accurately. So I did it more supernatural. It was more like a thriller, kind of horror kind oh, of thing. okay. And, uh, but I didn't have none of the element like ni Sempasuchil, <laughs> nor El Pan de Muerto, nor what Day of the Dead actually meant. Mm -hmm. So when I took it to Domingo and he read it like, this is in the other ones. Yeah, I mean, that's not it, you know. You're like, scaring people. Any, any scary movie, you can watch it anywhere, <laughs> right? But, you know, one of our main objectives here at Teatro Indigo, it's, uh, we actually use the slogan, uh, entertain and educate. Mm -hmm. It's been for the past years, and and uh, it was very important for me because I grew up in Mexico in a little, a little town, a little village in Mexico, and we, we had that tradition. So mm -hmm. I lived it, and yeah. I, I shared with it, like, no, this is not it. You know, we need to include... So we can tell a story, but also educate the, the audience yeah. about it. And that's, we have every single element of the Day of the Dead uh, in there. You know, we go from the Pan de Muerto, why do we, even in Mole, why is it like, uh, in a lot of regions of Mexico, they cook Mole for the other Muertos, and uh, Velas, the, the candles, and uh, flores, so, so flores and Pasuchil. We have every little element, and we give you the explanation why it's part of it. Yeah. That is awesome. I, I regret that I haven't seen it before, but this is my year. Um, I, I have to admit, I, I didn't grow up, my family's from Mexico, but I grew up up north, and I didn't know what uh, Dia de los Muertos was until I came to Houston. And I remember the first time I saw the Catrinas and the skulls, and even though they were beautifully decorated, 
I, it was a little creepy to me. I said, ah, why would they do that? ¿Por qué las visten así? You know, and, and so when I did um, realize what Dia de los Muertos was, what it signified, it was just, it just, it transformed my, my thinking of, of that day and, and of the images. And now it's something that I celebrate and, and I embrace and, uh, and really do hope to pass on to my children. So I'm guessing that you having grown up in that environment, that's one of your goals. Yeah, I, I'm like you. I grew up here in in, in, in Houston, and uh, my parents are from Mexico, but they never actually taught me these traditions. I guess right. they didn't practice it, so I didn't really know about Dia de los Muertos. So it was an educational process for me. It, it, and I, I guess the education part is not just for our own families and our own generations mm -hmm. coming uh upcoming it's also you know for our friends and neighbors you know that they that they see these things and, and they might feel the same way just because they don't understand it so i really do love the education component of it because that's you know houston is such a multicultural city and and it is something that um that is to be celebrated and and also uh, i actually when i was posting on my social media pages i actually had some people happy that we're really focusing on the little muertos because it's something that has allowed them in their grieving process so i know yeah. and that's another yeah i think that's another important um, point of on the celebration because um grieving the grieving process you know it's harder for some of us and easier for some others but I think the other of Mortis helps us maintain them, maintain our, our loved ones that have that are gone. So I think that's that's one of the most important also points also. Awesome. Well I you know, I could talk about this all day with you guys. <laughs> um is there anything that you uh that you want your audiences to know? Uh first of all, when does it start? It's going to be where and it's when? It's gonna be at Talento Bilingue de Houston. Uh I believe it's three three South Jensen Drive. Houston, Texas, 7703. I know the address now. <laughs> 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 yeah. And uh, Talento Bilingüe de Houston, everybody knows, next to the Guadalupe Church, is del 1 de noviembre al 4 de noviembre, November 1st to the 4th. Yes. And uh, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday at 8 p.m. and Sunday at 5 p.m. Great. So I know if you go to the Talento Bilingue, Bilingue website, you can get all of the information yes. on how to buy tickets. And yeah, they actually have the link to buy the tickets there in advance. You also can go just directly to Talento Bilingüe. And of course, you can visit the uh, Grupo de Teatro Indigo social media, Instagram, where is Grupo de Teatro Indigo. And I was telling you, Sonia, that we just opened the website, website, which is Grupo de Teatro Indigo .com. Also, I know we have to run a commercial, but I do want to say that um, the, it, this play is self funded. They fund their own um, props and, and sets, and it's all volunteers. So they're always taking donations. If there's anybody that wants to contribute or learn how to contribute, please visit their social media pages. And, uh, and communicate with one of these gentlemen. Thank you so much, Domingo and Eddie, for being thank here today. You, Gracias. And we'll be right back. Well, welcome back to Casa Vida Houston. Hope you're enjoying um, the guests that we're having. There are just so many events, Sonia, going on in the city, isn't there? There is a lot. There is a lot. Um, there, we, coming up this weekend, we have, what was it that we have this weekend? Well, we've got the calendar of events. Let me see. Let's put it up again. Because <laughs> there are so many. We, are, we ourselves are finding out about so many things. So here we've got, uh, uh, is that today, the 25th? Yes, today is the 25th. So today is the Death by Chocolate at Morales Funeral Home. So, guys, you don't want to miss that. That sounds like a lot of fun. Uh, and then October 27th, which is Saturday? Saturday. We're, Sounds we're right. Saturday. Yes, yeah, that's Saturday. <laughs> Which is Saturday. It's the Dia de los Muertos Altar Procession and Reception at Casa Ramirez Folk Art Gallery. And uh, there is the address. Go to their fe Facebook page or Casa Vida Facebook page for more information. Right. And then uh, on November, November, of course, that's next weekend. We're going to have, uh, well, actually next week, uh, November 1st, 2nd, 3rd, and 4th is the Calavera con Calavera that we just uh, talked about. And then November the 2nd is the Calavera Rendezvous at Mecca. So a lot of events going on. Um, so, of course, um, don't forget, one of the main things, of course, also is that right now, what else do we have going on? Well, early voting started on Monday, and it's actually been um, 
a record-breaking turnout. So please don't stop voting. Make sure you look at harrisvotes.com for locations and times on where you can vote, but it's critical. Your voice needs to be heard. Um, it's, uh, it was Monday through this Friday, and then the following week, and then the elections are November 6th. But be sure to get out there and vote. Yes, yes, guys. Uh, I know I went out there and voted. Yeah, I early voted. And, of course, it felt like it was a regular election because the lines weren't long. And uh, so I know it's a little bit discouraging. You know, we all have, a, you know, all sorts of stuff to do other than be voting, better things to do. But you need to get out there. And, you know, one of the things, Sonia, that I did notice that was, all, well, where I went anyway, it was nothing but older people. I'm in Pasadena, so I went in Pasadena, and everybody, I mean, I'm literally looking around me, because I, I was in line for 45 minutes at least wow. to vote. Wow. And everyone around me, I'm not kidding you, everybody was at least 50 and up. Very few, like maybe a little bit under 50, but the majority, 90% of the people were at least 45 and up. And many, many of them were, you know, looked like they were, you know, in their 60s or older. So I'm like, where are the young people? Yeah. You know, you it, know. Historically, though, it is uh, 40 and over that, that gets out and, tur and really turns out to vote. So we do need our young people out there make informed decisions, educate yourself about the candidates. Um, and I'm really surprised about the 45-minute lines, but that is because we've had record-breaking turnout. So yes. I'm excited. Yes, yes. It's, it's very, it is very exciting. And, and just like that meme, you know, we just put up that meme earlier. Uh, but uh, just want to remind you that another meme that I saw was that, you know, you don't want, you wouldn't have your grandmother pick out your clothes. Why are you going to have your <laughs> grandmother or grandparents pick out, pick your, um, you know, the pick people you have in office, your yeah. candidates. Yeah, so go out and vote. All right. So, again, I just want to remind you that we have our show every Thursday. Thank you for joining us today. Jo please join us every Thursday at 1 p.m. And I'm Elizabeth Miranda. Remember that if you are looking to buy or sell a home, give me a call. My cell phone number is 832-878-1255. And Sonia? And, and I'm Sonia Rivera and a small business consultant. So if you need any assistance with your front and back office materials, please give me a call, 832-790-9140. You can also go to my website, www.soniarivera.us, to see all my services. All right. And we will see you guys next week. Thank you. On Thursday at 1.